Here at the Liver Tumor Center at Roswell Park, we do a lot of liver-directed therapies. Liver-directed therapies are basically procedures or interventions for tumors that arise within the liver. Now, the liver is a very common uh, uh, organ where tumors from outside the liver can spread. The liver, as you know, is one of the largest organs in the body, and it sits up in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen. A lot of the liver is up under the rib cage, actually. Now, the, we, when we talk about liver tumors, we're really talking about both primary liver tumors, that is, tumors that start in the liver, for example, liver cancer or hepatocellular cancer, which can occur in patients who have both cirrhosis and even in cases without cirrhosis. Another kind of tumor that might start in the liver is something called cholangiocarcinoma. But the liver can also be a site for metastases, that is, tumors that arise from other locations, such as colon cancer or neuroendocrine or carcinoid tumors can also spread to the liver. So we perform these liver-directed therapies for all these different types of tumors. I'd like to talk about liver resection. Liver resection means the surgical removal, removal of a tumor in the liver. Now this can be done again for either primary, that is tumors that start in the liver, or in certain types of metastatic tumors that have spread from other parts of the body. Liver resection is, it can be done a number of different ways. It can be done laparoscopically, that is through small in incisions on the belly button and in the abdominal area, anywhere from four and to as many as six little port sites, anywhere from a quarter inch to three quarters of an inch in size. And it also may be required to do what's a more standard or open approach. So, whether or not it's minimally invasive or laparoscopically or open will depend upon many, many factors that I will discuss uh, with you indiv individually. In general, for smaller tumors that are more peripheral, that is more on the surface of the liver, laparoscopic approach may be more feasible. For larger tumors or tumors that are more deeper within the liver, we may need to do a open approach. So liver resection essentially means removal of part of the liver. And I'd like to explain that better by using a diagram that I drew here. The liver has both a right side and a left side. The right side of the liver is generally the larger part of the liver. That's about 55% of the liver uh, volume is on the right side and about 45% on the left side. Now, as most people may or may not know, the liver can regenerate. And in a healthy, uh, younger uh, person, you can remove up to as much as 75% of a, of a healthy liver, and the other 25% of the liver will essentially grow back. Now, as we get older, and as other things happen with the liver, for example, someone who had chemotherapy or someone who may have hepatitis or other problems with the liver, the liver's ability to grow back is impaired. So in a healthy liver, while we might be able to remove 75%, in a less healthy liver, we may only be able to remove half the liver. Otherwise, if we remove too much, then after surgery, you would develop liver failure. And obviously, we can't let that happen. So the amount of liver that can be removed will be very dependent on a lot of different factors, and we'll have to talk about that on an individual basis. But basically, the type of liver surgery, the type of removal we would do would be very much dependent on where in the liver it occurs. You may not realize it, but the liver is actually divided into many different segments. There are eight different segments of the liver. There are four on the right side and four on the left side. But the liver can essentially, there's a, an imaginary line here uh, that shows the uh, divi dividing point b between the right side and the left side of the liver. What this picture is showing is the blood vessels that are going into the liver. So this would be the right side of the liver, the blood vessels going to, and the left side of the liver. Now the important thing to know here is that you can't, you have to save either the major blood flow to one side or the other of the liver. So if there's a tumor here, for example, in the center of the liver and it's involving both sides of the liver, this tumor would be considered inoperable or couldn't be removed. So as we're going over this, we're going to look at your particular situation and see what liver resection might be valuable for your particular case. Now, 
Liver resection essentially, as I mentioned, is removing part of the liver. So I'm just going to give an example so you'll get a general idea of what we're talking about. For example, a tumor in this location here would require removal of the right side of the liver. So in that particular case, we would be removing this side of the liver, the right side, and the left side of the liver would grow back. If the tumor is over here, for example, then we would remove this side of the liver, and the healthy side of the liver, the right side, would be the side of the liver that would regenerate. So again, it depends on where in the liver. If, for example, there's a tumor that's very peripheral on the edge, then it may be only necessary to remove that section of the liver. As long as you remove the tumor and you have clear, clear margins of normal liver around it, that's all that would be necessary. So if the tumor is more central in the middle of the liver, then you may have to remove a larger part. If it's more peripheral, then you would remove just that segment. Now there will be cases where you might have tumors on both sides of the liver. For example, this situation here, where you may remove this area here, this area here, and this portion of the liver here, right in this area, this would be part of the liver that you would save, and that would grow back. So all of these are different options for us depending on your particular situation. Not only the number of tumors, but the size of the tumors, and also the health of the normal or underlying liver. Now, in certain cases where we can't perform liver resection, or for example, there's a tumor on the edge, and then in, in a particular situation, let's say there's a tumor in a very difficult place in the middle of the liver here, and maybe one here, we also have the ability to do a combination of treatments, such as removing the larger tumor, and for the smaller tumors, we can do something called microwave ablation or radiofrequency ablation, where you can actually put a needle into the tumor right through the liver surface. This can be done laparoscopically or under direct vision. And this probe is hooked up to a, a box, which is a, a microwave generator, and actually you put microwave energy and essentially microwave or kill the tumor with heat. The heat temperatures are very high, much like a microwave oven is used um, in, in, uh, in, in homes to cook food. And the microwave can generate very high temperatures uh, uh, over the boiling point of water, over 100 degrees uh, uh, Celsius, and actually kill the tumor as well as some of the tissue around it. So in this particular case, you could put the, the microwave antenna directly into the tumor, turn on the generator, and essentially uh, kill the tumor with heat. And what happens is the body, once the tumor is dead, the, the, the body just absorbs the dead, um, uh, the dead cells and you're left with a basically a dark spot that we follow with CAT scan. So uh, microwave ablation together with liver resection can be done actually together. We can do the liver resection separately or we can do the, the microwave ablation separately or sometimes we'll do them in, in conjunction. There may be cases where we go into surgery with the intent of removing the tumor, but we find something unexpected, and then we have microwave ablation as a backup. So when I do consents for surgery for patients who are having liver surgery, I will always put microwave as a, as a backup in the event that we find something unexpected or we need it to help us with the surgery. There may be situations where we actually use the microwave to help us with the surgery, by microwaving along the margin here, we may microwave along the margin to decrease blood loss associated with the, uh, with the surgery. So liver resection can be done for a number of different kinds of tumors. It uh, can be in, in, done in conjunction with ablation. There are one specific thing I wanted to just mention. There are ways that we can uh, pre-grow the liver ahead of time. And for example, <coughs> if you have if your tumor is over here, let's say there's a situation where you may have two tumors on this side, but this side of the liver is very small. For example, let's say instead of 45% uh, of the, uh, the liver, you had a very small left lobe for whatever reason. There are ways that you can actually try to grow that liver ahead of time. And what you do is we have a procedure called portal vein embolization called portal vein 
embolization. Portal vein is the, and what you do is actually block this so that this part of the liver loses its blood flow, it shrinks down, and this part of the liver actually gets bigger. So you can actually pre-regenerate the liver prior to surgery so that your post-operative recovery is easier because the liver has already started growing. Now this is not done in all cases, but in some cases of what we call borderline resectable tumors, we may use this portal vein embolization to help us out. There are also other strategies to shrink the tumors uh, that we may employ uh, in conjunction with your surgery, uh, such as putting uh, uh, beads into the tumor or uh, uh, either chemotherapy beads or radiation beads, and those beads may be used to try to shrink the tumor ahead of time to facilitate or, ma or make the surgery a little bit easier. So the liver is a very complex organ. There's a lot of blood vessels in the liver, and that may have a lot to do with the decisions that we make regarding your particular situation. And also the size and numbers of the tumors are very important as well. The choice of what type of liver therapy to do, that is surgical resection, that is removal or ablation, is in a large part dependent on a number of factors as we discussed earlier in terms of the size of the tumors in the liver, the number of tumors in the liver, but also where the tumors are relative to the blood vessels that are inside the liver. This picture here shows the, as the blood leaves the liver, it goes back to the heart through the inferior vena cava. So the blood goes up into the chest and into the heart. Now the liver, as we know, is divided into two, seg two sections. There's the right lobe and the left lobe, which I've shown here. This is the right hepatic vein, or the, the, the vein that drains this whole side of the liver. Then there's a middle hepatic vein, and then there's the left hepatic vein. Now, you need to keep at least one of these veins open to drain the liver after the surgery so that your liver can regenerate and grow and remain healthy. So if the tumor is involving this vein or in this area here, then we can remove the right side of the liver. That would be called a right hepatectomy or right liver resection. If the tumor is involving these veins here, then that would, you would remove the left side. That would be called a left hepatectomy. There may be circumstances where you have tumors on both sides, and we may need to do a combination of therapies. For example, it, in this particular uh, circumstance, let's say we had a tumor here, we may recommend removing the right side of the liver and a small section of the left side, leaving this area of healthy liver behind. The most important thing in terms of doing a liver resection, there is no real limitation in terms of the number of tumors or the size of the tumors. It's really can you remove the tumors and still leave enough healthy liver behind so that your liver regenerates and you don't have any problems with liver failure. So we're always looking to see what is the part of the liver that needs to be removed, what is the part of the liver that will remain, and will there, will there be enough liver to regenerate. It typically takes uh, a few months for the liver to regenerate, although we will notice after surgery it begins regenerating very quickly within the first few days of surgery. What you would expect after uh, having liver surgery, if, if you do have problems with liver regeneration, what, you'll, what we'll see is that you'll have fluid retention, so you may have swelling in your legs or, or, or fingers or your face may appear puffy. There'll be problems with blood clotting because the liver makes chemicals that help the blood clot, so you may have blood thinning problems. You'll also uh, notice you may have some yellow jaundice, some a yellow hue to the eyes or to the skin, because that's what the liver does. The liver makes bile, which is, gets rid of the yellow out of your system. It makes blood clotting products, and it also processes proteins, and it also detoxifies drugs. So we have to be very careful in somebody who's had a significant liver resection because there are certain drugs that may accumulate in your body, especially pain medicines and anti-anxiety medicines we have to be careful with because there's not as much liver to break down those medications. So the other thing I wanted to again mention is that we may go into these surgeries thinking we're going to do a liver resection, but find something unanticipated. CT scans are, are great uh, tools, but there may be very, very small tumors that we don't need 
that we don't see on a CAT scan. So if we go in to do this surgery and we know about these two tumors, but let's say we find, uh, and we didn't know about it, we find a tiny tumor here that we didn't know about. Well, we could also use something called microwave ablation, which we discussed previously, and you can actually put a needle using ultrasound in the operating room where doing what's called intraoperative ultrasound. So we were actually running an ultrasound machine directly over the liver, mapping out where all the tumors are and helping us find them and localize them. But we can take this microwave probe, which is just a, a needle, um, and, and actually microwave or destroy this tumor with heat. So using very, very high temperatures, we can actually kill that tumor. Thus, we've removed this tumor, removed this one, and we've done microwave here, so we've taken care of all the tumors in the liver, yet saved and spared enough healthy liver for the liver to regenerate and not to have any problems after surgery.